What's up guys, thanks for tuning in to another Rocket Punch Army review. My name is Charles as usual, and today we're going to look at the Frame Action Meister Govarion. This is the collector grade um, thing that I get from BBTS. So if you're going to get one of these, uh, if they're available still, or anything that you buy at BBTS, link it is in the description below, uh, you can request collector grade and they give it to you in a box and wrapped in plastic. I'm sure you are a fan of the channel. You already knew that. Alright, and that helps out the channel too, clicking on the links. So we get this right here, which is the Frame Action Meister Psycho Armor Govarian. So, um, first things first, it's a lot smaller than I expected. Uh, it is about $100, maybe like 93 bucks, something like that. Uh, very small. Okay, very light. Um, I'm not going to say I'm disappointed, but I, I, I guess I am disappointed in the size. I was expecting something. You know, I just ordered it really quick. I saw, I'm like, oh my god, they made a Govarian. I got to go. I got to get it. got to get it. Ordered it without really looking at whatever. I just figured, hey, it's a new release of Govarian. The only other one I have is this one here. It's a vintage one by Poem. So it's a, uh, it's a Gokin. According to this, it's a DX. So it's a cool box. Speaking of boxes... I think if you're going to pay so much for something, don't release it in such a cheap looking box, honestly. If you guys were familiar, I forgot who made them, uh, the Megazone little toys that came in little boxes. That's what it reminds me of, just those cheap little toys. Um, if it's going to cost $100, at least have the flip open box with some nice art in the front. Um, I don't know. Anyway, but enough of that. Uh, we're going to get into this little plastic thing, which is very nicely wrapped. Unfortunately, I'm going to take that apart. But the reason I get them like this just so I can get a nice little box and put them away. But uh, let's get inside here and check it out. By the way, guys, before we move any further, it does come with a little instruction sheet and a stand, which I'm not even going to pop out of there. Like I always say, not a big fan of stands. All right, so before I actually open it, I'm just going to spin the box around. I'll give you some information from Wikipedia uh, since I have not watched the anime. Uh, it's not a robot I'm familiar with uh, to that extent. Basically, Psycho Armor Govarian is a Japanese anime television series created by Go Nagai. It was produced by Knack Productions and TV Tokyo. The series was originally broadcast from July 6th, 1983 to December 28th, 1983 in Japan. Now, besides Japan, it was also broadcast in South Korea in 1988 by MBC. Right? Uh, and you'll notice... This uh, has a lot of similarity to uh, Mazinger Z. We'll get in the box and take him out so we can take a closer look. Now you'll see here he does bear a striking resemblance to Mazinger Z uh, as far as like, for example, his head and a little mouth grill. And of course the heat sink here on his uh, chest. Aside from that, very Gundam-y, I guess, is the word I would use. Not much else uh, in relation to Mazinger Z. As a matter of fact, I believe in Korea... Uh, this was part of the Mazinger Z series alongside Grozer X, if you guys know that other robot. All Gona Guy uh, robots, but uh, I think officially there's no uh, relationship between those. But um, obviously it's very easy to draw the comparison. It's got the horns and everything. But aside from that, like I said, it doesn't look anything else like Mazinger from down here. I will say pulling this out of the tray, very, very disappointed as far as how it feels for a hundred dollars this is literally a fifteen dollar toy if it was mass produced here in the u.s or something or china for u.s consumption you're not going to get a fifteen dollar toy with this kind of uh, paint apps but uh you know they're not out of this world either the paint apps aren't uh you know nothing they can't reproduce in china really i mean this is a chinese toy obviously it's made in china but i think you know what i'm trying to say uh it's you know, this is coming from a, a, a smaller company, maybe not producing higher numbers, but $100. I mean, I, I really can't see where that $100 went. There's absolutely no metal here. The figure's small. It's light. It almost feels like a Gundam model, maybe a little heavier. If you were to fill in, I, what I used to do with my Gundam models is actually fill in the legs with clay uh, just to get them to get a little hefty. It almost feels like those little models that I used to build. And now that we have this guy out, I want to bring something along because this is uh, called the uh, Frame Action Master series, 
which I believe is along the lines of what Yamato tried to do with these. And now that I have them side by side, I thought they were going to be the same size. So Yamato made these, which are just basically frames where they would bolt on different robot parts to make whatever robot they were going to do. And they obviously chose obscure robots. All right, dude, rev your engine. Go ahead, get it out of your system. Um, so they did that, but they did that with very obscure robots. They didn't sell a lot. The company went under. These things were clearanced out, and they're excellent toys. I will say that these, I don't know what the original prices were, but I did pick this guy up for maybe, I don't think, more than 20 bucks. But the paint apps on this are spectacular in comparison to that. This might have been in the $50, $60 range when they came out. I might be wrong. But at the same time, when they came out, adjusting for inflation, even though it's only a few years, you're getting closer to this. But this feels a little bit more substantial, even though it technically does feel like a, like, a, like a model kit, just with very nice plastics and paint. But I think the idea uh, they were going for was something like this. Just take a frame and attach parts to it. I mean, it is called Frame uh, Action Meisters, so I'm sure... They're going to make some more robots, probably obscure ones, uh, since this is a small thing. I, I would prefer maybe doubling the price and giving us about a 7-inch figure, like Solo Chogokin size, so we can display with other robots. This right here just looks like a little like capsule toy, really. You know, some people are down to pay 100 bucks if they really want this uh, character. So we're not going to completely throw in the towel yet. Um, we are going to show you the posing. I mean, it is a sentinel figure, so it's going to be amazing as far as posing and quality. So as far as the feet, I noticed the feet weren't um, completely flat. Kind of, kind of get them in here, like really close for them to be flat. If you want to separate the legs, see how that lifts up. You do get uh, this right here. So let's get that out of the way, so you can get a little bit better posing. Um, the proportions. Uh, obviously, this is a stylized version of him. A sentinelized version, I would say. Uh, that's from the side there. He's got the big feet. Uh, you know, the Japanese posture with the crotch thrust. You can do that if you want. Uh, you'll do that fine. Now, before we move on to accessories, we want to check out the articulation. It's very basic, but very articulated. Uh, we got the ball joint head, which allows not too much movement because of the mullet here and the chin hitting. But uh, it is a ball joint. We're going to show you that in a second in accessories. You got these little shoulder armor things that kind of wobble around. But the articulation of the shoulder is nice. It is on a ball joint, as you can see. It gives a slight butterfly uh, movement here. But I don't like the way this is very loose on there. This one doesn't seem to be loose, but for some reason this one is. The arms do go out, which is a nice little feature there. Um, they also hinge down. Not really hinge, it's all a ball joint. Uh, they do go around. Does anybody have that kind of OCD thing where if you flip them around all the way, you kind of have to flip it back? I'm not going to do that. Let's see if I can make it through the review without flipping it back around. Because it like bothers me. It's like an OCD thing, I guess. I can't flip it around completely without wanting to do it back the other way. Anyway, moving right along. Weird, I know. Uh, elbows, you get the, well, you get the upper bicep swivel. The elbow does come in a fair amount. You'll see it meets there on that line. You get the hands on not really a ball joint. I think it's just like a pin. I'll be showing you that in a minute. You do get a um, little ab crunch. So the chest is separate from the stomach, then the stomach is separate from the hips. Okay? It doesn't spin all the way around. Uh, as far as the legs, these little um, armor pieces do move. To give you a little bit more range of movement here. All right, we twist this forward a little bit, just a tad. It doesn't go all the way up like on a Gundam, but you'll see it starts hitting there, right about there. I couldn't find a way to get it up a little bit more. And knees bend a fair amount also. All right, then you get this movement, little swivels here. Legs do go out as far as you want them to go. Then when we get to the feet, they do have a tilt here. Uh, but if you push them in, there's not much tilt. you got to push them down without popping them out of the ball joint. And then I believe... No, I thought this uh, was... I think it was the Baldios that had the... Well, anyway, it doesn't even have the toe joint like the Baldio does. But 
that's pretty much it. But that does allow from, for some spirited kind of, uh, you know, poses. Again, I'm not a big uh, fan of posing my figures, but if you wanted to, you can get some pretty striking poses out of this. All right, so let's start off with the accessories. We're going to look at the most basic first, which is the open hands, which come with uh, pins. I, I assume they're replacement pins. This one just fell off because it's already pins on the figure. So that's a nice little uh, detail there to include extra ones, I guess. You do get a additional or an additional head designed by Masami Obari, which is the guy that was in charge of the design. I don't know if it's for the z design of the toy or the, the concept of the toy. I'm not sure. But you do to get another additional head, which is a little bit slightly different, more aggressive, more kind of samurai-ish looking. Uh, you also get the Psycho Saber, which already has the hand installed, which is very nice. No fiddling around, trying to shove PVC hands onto uh, brittle plastic. Not saying it's as brittle, but you know what I mean. And stabbing yourself like I used to in the old videos. You also get a green metallic fist, which is called the Psycho Crash. Okay, so I'm assuming it's a super powerful fist. And then the Psycho Bazooka. you notice all the hands, except this one, unless it fell out somewhere, uh, have pins. Okay, so go ahead and put the uh, open hands here so you can check it out. So this is very similar to the, uh, like I said, the Yamato GNU DOU. I forgot to tell you that that was the name of that that series, that line, they did some Machine Robos, they did uh, uh, Sasu Riger, I think, whatever that one, the green train guy, or uh, I forgot the name, don't, don't, don't call me on that, I forgot the names, but this is what it looks like, um, with the hands open, All right, and then we'll go ahead and show you the crash, the cycle crash, with the green metallic fist, There he is with the green metallic fist. Then the uh, Psycho Bazooka. I'm assuming this goes this way. All right, there he is with the Psycho Bazooka. And then last but not least, we'll show you the uh, Psycho Saber. All right, there, so there he is with the uh, Psycho Saber. Oh, I did happen to find the pin. So every single additional hand thing has its own pin. I noticed the hand is separate from here which is pretty cool. I thought it was molded in there. wanted to show you the um, additional head here. You pop off the uh, regular head and you'll notice it's got a little ball joint. It looks like it's made out of a different kind of plastic. I guess a little tougher plastic that won't uh, break as easily. And you can put the Musami Obari head which I just dropped there and just pop it on like normal. There you are. And that's what he looks like with that other head. And of course we have to um, compare it with the old poem Goken. As you can see here from two different times. This is a time when everything was out of proportion and chubby and they had to deal with the molding processes of the time compared to what we have now which is very detailed um, molding and precision and all that stuff. Just for anybody who's randomly just watching this video, here's what he scales like to a 6-inch Hasbro Star Wars figure. So guys, before I give you my final thoughts, make sure if you're liking the videos, please give a like, subscribe, you know, share them to your friends. Uh, this channel's pretty much hanging on to a thread. <laughs> don't want to close this channel down, but it'd be cool to get some support. The likes really help to bring it up in, um, you know, YouTube uh, searches and stuff like that. Having said that, final thought. Um, let's start off with what it is as a figure. As a figure, I think it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, I find no faults in it as far as construction, uh, paint, uh, design, articulation. It's it's excellent. I think the drawback is is just trying to justify this to be a hundred dollar figure. I mean, yes, we live in a time where you know MP44, the the Optimus Prime is five hundred dollars. I understand that, but we, we still look at it like, wow, it's a lot of money. But this, this, I'm just trying to really wrap my head around where that money went. This should not be more than 50 bucks uh, for the size. And I can understand why it's more. Obviously, there's licensing. There is, uh, you know, recouping the money for tooling out of such a small amount of 
uh, I don't know exactly how many they made, but I'm assuming it's a small amount. Uh, I'm just trying to justify where the pricing uh, comes from. So it's really hard to swallow that pill, that $100 pill. Uh, but if you absolutely have to have a modernized poem figure, this is the way to go. If you can justify the price, obviously. But here's another thing. This might be just testing the waters. Sentinel can, is so much uh, more capable of releasing just beautiful figures. I mean, they've released some crazy stuff. They might just be testing the waters with this license to see where it goes, if there's enough sales. Uh, but I think the downside is just this. If this is like testing the waters, it's a little expensive for what it is. But give us a you know, $200, $250 figure with metal components. And I'm all down as long as it's about seven to nine inches so you can display with everything else. I'm completely down. Uh, yeah, so that's it. If you have any questions or comments, guys, leave them below. If you like the figure and you want to check it out, please use the link in the description. Even if you don't buy Psycho uh, Armor Govarion, uh, there's other cool stuff there. Again, that helps the channel a lot, even just looking. If you want more content, uh, you can definitely help us out that way. And there's also a Patreon. That's it, guys. Until next time, bye-bye.